God helps who? The burden of life is from ourselves. It's lightness from the grace of Christ and the love of God. When we heard us mock a very popular motto, God helps those who help themselves. Yeah, we make fun of it. I mean, it's not even a Bible verse. Not only is it a biblical. likely to help you, love you, accept you, and deliver you if you are trying your hardest. Don't you fear, don't you fear that he is likely to leave you stranded and alone if you haven't done your best, or am I the only one? Listen, I believe that we are this time to be doers of God's word. We were created to be our part in the body that is living in grace and sharing his grace with the world. See Romans 10, part 13 to 15 for how it works. God's involvement is a given. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid but gives us power, love and self-discipline. So, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering of, for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace ha was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus has destroyed death and has brought life and immorality to light through the gospel. His grace saved us and his grace calls us to a holy life. One result of this holy life is that I join with others in suffering for the good news. I want to do that because I want other people to experience His grace. But it is not because of anything we have done, but because of His own purpose and grace. Who does God help? God helps those who are completely helpless, which, by the way, is you and me and everyone else. Lord of the harvest, I come to you helpless today. I give up trying to help myself. Thank you for forgiving me when trying to earn your help by works. So I rest in you now. I claim the spirit of power and love you have placed in me. Live a holy life through me by your grace according to your purposes. Amen. Ask yourself the question, if you can lose your salvation, you already have. Being saved by grace is a clear doctrine found in tons of passages like Ephesians 2, part 8 to 10. But some people believe that if you don't hang on to Jesus tightly enough or if you commit certain sins, you can and you can spend eternity in hell even though you have been born again it can be quite confusing because there are a few verses that look like they say that if you take them out of the greater context of the whole bible it's important to know that it's not you holding on to jesus it's jesus holding you for instance jesus said I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. That's a beautiful word picture.
scripture, close your eyes for a second and imagine that Jesus is gently holding you in his hands, protecting you, keeping your secure through all life so that no one and nothing can separate you from him. That's the picture of grace. The Galatians, however, allowed legalism and the flesh to contaminate contaminate the grace of God. So Paul asked them a very important question. Are you so foolish of the beginning by means of the spirit of the walking in grace? Are you not trying to finish by means of the flesh? We are saved by grace and securing grace forever. His love never fails. He is with us and in us always. He is the one who holds us. Have you become foolish by trying to attain this by your own efforts? Unchanging Savior, thank you. Thank you for holding me close and never letting me go ever. I rest in your love and your grace. Remind me often of the foolishness of my human effort. I trust in you and the Spirit's work within me for my security. Amen. Keeping grace amazing. He who has not felt what sin is in the Old Testament knows little what grace is in the new. He who has not trembled in Moses and wept in David and wandered in the Isha will rejoice little in Matthew or rest little in John. He who has not suffered under the law, the law will scarcely hear the glad son of the gospel. Grace is amazing and I use amazing in its truest sense. When we contemplate grace, it should leave us shaking our heads in wonder and raising our hands in praise, in pure and diluted form, grace is stunning. Yet I am afraid that our flesh tends to water it down over time. A modern redemption of Newton's classic hymn, Amazing Grace, would sound like this. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a pretty good guy like me. I once was the uh, directionally challenged, but now I am found. I once needed some corrective lenses, but now I see. Probably know how to, how that him really goes, and that it is an echo of biblical truth. Grace saved a wretch like me, not a pretty good guy, but a self-centered, independent mess. A scripture is very clear that all our good works in the flesh are but filthy rage stinking rage in the nostrils of God. I was lost, not directionally challenged or just a little off track. I was completely wandering in ignorance. My vision wasn't a little fuzzy. I was blind. Everything was black. I couldn't see a thing, but he opened my eyes and I now see through. And this sin, this fondness, and this life are a result of his amazing grace. In 2 Timothy 2 part 1, the Apostle Paul said to his young protege, You then, my son, the grace that is in Christ Jesus, that's a command. It's an imperative, be strong in that grace, earn it appropriately. Ponder grace regularly so that it never ceases to amaze you that a just and holy God loves you and embraces you because it is his nature and joy to do so. God, keep grace amazing in my soul. May 
the spirit prompts my mind to be made my will bent to it continually. Amen. However, to get through today, it is not impossible. Has Jesus ever prompted you to do something it is and you find yourself thinking, I just can't do this? Throughout the Gospels, Jesus often asked the disciples to do things they were completely incapable of doing without him. Christ wants to do the same through you if you'll let him. Live confidently in his form. Jesus is the source of power to keep you focused, confident, and at peace despite what happens in your life and around you. The power you need to overcome evil and all the powers of darkness tremble at what they just heard. Because all the powers of darkness can't run out a single word. The king of Aram was at war with Israel. Like any decent leader, he had a group of uh, strategists that planned the movements of his enormous army. It should have been a slam dunk victory. His only problem was that Israel always knew what that, uh, they were going to do before they did it. The king uh, thought he had a leak in his leadership. When he confronted them, they said it wasn't them. He, but the prophet Elisha, who was getting the inside scope from God about their plans, he told his army to capture Elisha. When Elisha's servant went out to get water one morning, he saw a massive army ready to attack. Oh no, my lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. When the servant's eyes were open, he saw that the hills surrounding Elisha were filled with the fiery chariots of God's army. On a natural level, it looked as if all hope was lost. But on a spiritual level, the battle belonged to the Lord. You face enemies every day. Some are physical, but at least one is a spiritual Satan. He and his demons are very powerful. He is also wicked. He is the king or the lord of this dark world, this present darkness. He is the great liar, the great accuser, and he hates us passionately passionately hates us. Like Elisha's servant, you may be filled with fear today, calling out, what shall we do? You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. No matter what Satan has to throw at you today, remember that an army of angels battles for you and the spirit of Christ is in you. God, I am so glad we're on the same side. Amen. Your victory in Jesus. The enemy wants to move you into a copying kind of Christianity that has given up hope of seeing. God's res resurrection power, glory, when heaven invades earth. Sometimes we visualize God's struggle with Satan like a championship heavy weight boxing match. The contenders are tough and it's gonna be a gruesome uh, fight. Not so. The struggle is more like the Dallas Maverick. Playing. My sixth grade boys basketball team. Now my boys are really very good, but if they do go against the Maverick, it's a bit of a mismatch. Okay, so they would have no chance at all. The evil one, although he is quite powerful, has.
has no chance against the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords either. There are at least three biblical reasons why we know that the evil one is subject to God. He is powerful but not omnipotent because he was created he does not have more power than God himself. He is crafty but not omniscient. He does not know everything. He does not know the future. He is wicked but not omnipresent. He is in one place at a time. That's why he has to send in demons to do his work. So if you are in Christ but God's grace, you are on the winning team. At the same time, you must, must, must live in humble awareness of the fact that Satan would crush you like the mavericks would squish my voice. Basketball team, if it wasn't for you being in him, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. If Christ is in you, the devil can't hurt you because he has essential limitations. He is a created one and he is fighting the creator of all things. Just remember, you are strong in the Lord and the Lord alone. King of kings, give me humble confidence today. Humble me with full awareness that you and you alone can stand against Satan. Amen. Give me the courage to stand confidently knowing that you are in me and I am in you. The battle is yours, Lord. I rest in you today. Amen. Living in victory every day. If you see a snake, just kill it. Don't appoint a committee on snakes. A South American missionary woke up one morning to find a giant anaconda snake in his little house, over 25 feet long, right there, drooled up, scared him to death, obviously. He snuck out the window, went and told all his villager friends, Come and help me. So they went back to the house with him and looked through the window. Sure enough, there it, there it was. One of the villagers said, I know what to do. And he grabbed his rifle, stuck it through the window and blamed. He put one bullet right in the head of that big snake. The snake started thrashing around, shaking the house violently. They just stood there in disbelief as they heard crashing and shaking and vibrating. Then it started to slow down and finally it was quiet in the house. When they went inside the house, they saw that the snake had caused incredible damage and chaos inside the little hut. I know what some of you are thinking because you are just like me. You are thinking, okay, I know the Bible says that Satan, the great ser serpent, is defeated, but something must be wrong at my house because Satan seems to be wrecking a walk in my life in my relationships and with sin struggles and all that kind of stuff. We live in the season of the evil one thrashing around after Jesus put a bullet in his head at the cross. Satan's final defeat is imminent. Soon enough it will be permanent. In the mean meantime, our struggle with the spiritual evil will continue as it attempts to trash our lives. We are wise to take Paul's counsel. Finally, be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. 
For all struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against against the power of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Holy Spirit, give me faith and wisdom today as I encounter a defeated, dying spiritual enemy. You are in me and you are greater than he that is trashing my world. I rest in you. I cease trying to fight in my own strength. I trust in you to fight for me and through me. Amen.